The Morning Show from your local news leader. It's time for Friday Flicks. As always, we have Chuck Kaplinski in studio. Chuck, we have two sequels today. Which one are we going to kick it off with? Well, we should start with the big one. Let's do it. Black, Black Panther. Panther, Wakanda <laughs> Forever. And of course, with the death of Chadwick Boseman, this sequel had to pivot. And it pivots in a very strong way. This is a very emotional film. It's a very somber film at times, and rightfully so. The opening sequences, the opening 15, 20 minutes are quite moving in the way that they give tribute to not only the character, but the actor as well. And the death of Tachila leaves Wakanda vulnerable. And that is a big, big problem because they have problems with this guy, Namor. Namor is from an underwater um, empire. And wouldn't you know it, this is the only other place that has vibranium other than Wakanda. And they get some uh, attention from outside forces that they don't want. And Namor wants to have a alliance with Wakanda, saying that they will in fact be stronger against the outside world, which they want to have nothing to do with. And who can blame them? Um, this movie has the standard action sequences that we come from. Uh, come to expect from the Marvel films. Uh, the last sequence in the third act is really quite spectacular and at times beautiful. But really, this movie is more about ideologies. This movie is more about politics. And more than anything, this movie is about dealing with grief. The absence of the Black Panther forces everyone to re, uh, reevaluate what their identity is, not only with each other, but also within the world. And that becomes incredibly complicated and surprisingly moving. This movie is too long. It runs two hours and 41 minutes, which is too long. But it isn't too long because of the usual reasons that superhero movies are too long. That would usually be endless battles. No, this one's too long because there are a lot of deep conversations regarding the politics involved, regarding responsibility to your culture. And, you know, while these conversations do go on a little bit too long, at least they are about something. And that's something that I did appreciate about this movie. Uh, as far as your time, again, this is a long film. There's only one credit sequence at the end. So once you sit through the initial credits, there's one more scene. You don't have to go all the way to the end. So I've saved you 10 to 15 minutes. But make sure you sit through that sequence because if you like these films, there's a big surprise. I'm sure there will be a few tears shed in those theaters too this weekend. Is it only in theaters? It is only in theaters and it is one of those where it is well worth going to the theater to see. So yeah, like this one more than I thought I would. All right, and now let's go ahead and talk about Enola Holmes 2 with Millie Bobby Brown. Did you see the first one? I haven't. You haven't? It's been on my to-do list though. It is on your, okay, good. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, my, my, my son tried to get me into the Stranger Things. Not a fan? Uh, well, it just seemed about, you know, <laughs> Everything I'd seen before, it was new to him, but it wasn't to me. So I really hadn't um, known much about Miss Brown until I watched the Enola Holmes films. And boy, I'm a fan. She is really, really something. She's incredibly talented, but not only that, incredibly charming. And her charm is what gets you through these movies, who, which are also too long. There you see Superman Henry Cavill playing Sherlock Holmes, uh, of course the worst violin player in the world even though he is a genius, and Enola's trying to set up her own detective agency. Well, no one wants to go to her, they all want to go to her brother. Well, she does end up getting a case in which she is trying to find a missing girl, a girl who worked at a match factory, and this leads to all sorts of complications. So many complications that we would be here all morning if I were to try to describe everything that happened in this movie. But what is interesting or what is so much fun about this movie is the humor that's there. The one thing I like about certain performers is that when they don't take themselves too seriously, and Brown does not. And I love when she talks to us. There are many times within these movies where she will just talk directly to the audience and you see her just from that expression. Her delivery of these things is quite comic. Uh, again, this movie is far too long and it's much more complicated than it has to be. It needs to just have a more straightforward mystery, which was a problem with the first film as well. But as you can see, production values are top notch. These movies are a lot of fun just to look at. And again, these two together, Cavill and Brown, if it weren't for them, these would be a waste of time. But with them on board, give this a shot. You can watch this and the, pre the uh, prequel on Netflix. You know, every time I see Millie Bobby Brown look-wise and just her early successful career, it reminds me of Natalie Portman a little bit. Very just much so. I can see that. And I'm going to throw one you don't know. 
What is it? Natalie Wood, even oh. before that. Very so, yes, <laughs> I can see that connection. Good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. All right. Thanks so much for being here, Chuck. You bet.